My name is Yasser, I'm a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice and a specialist antimicrobial pharmacist in secondary care. I've been working for the NHS for five years as a qualified pharmacist now and today I want to go through a video where I speak about how much you'll be paid as a specialist pharmacist working for the NHS. This is in accordance with the 2022 to 2023 NHS pay, so it's the most up-to-date pay. But before I do that, I want to tell you a bit about what a specialist pharmacist actually is and how much I was paid as a specialist pharmacist in the NHS. The first thing I want to say is that I started my NHS role within the antimicrobial field. The field that you choose does not matter. All of the pay banding for specialist roles as a pharmacist are the same. So once you start to specialize, different NHS trusts call it different things. So sometimes you'll see the role senior clinical pharmacist, um, or sometimes you'll see the role as a specialist pharmacist, but I'm talking about the band seven pay grade. So initially you start as a junior pharmacist and you start on a band six pay grade. After you've developed enough experience to become a band seven pharmacist, so that's talking about the pay grade, and you've got one year completed of your clinical pharmacy diploma, that's the certificate year, then you should be qualified enough to be applying for those roles. Some NHS trusts ask you to complete the entire diploma until you can actually apply for the role. It will be interesting for those who already work within an NHS trust to put down in the comment section below what their hospital requires them to do before they can apply for a band seven role. Do they need to complete the entire diploma or can you just do the certificate year and then apply? Quite often pharmacy students ask me, how do I become a specialist pharmacist? Specialist pharmacist roles, when we're talking about it in the hospital sector, that means that you have to develop some experience as a junior pharmacist working in a hospital. Very rarely do people who work outside of a hospital environment get a specialist pharmacist role. And that's because there are some key experiences that you need in order to apply for a specialist pharmacist role. When I started my specialist pharmacist role, it was a split role. So three days a week, I would work as a specialist antimicrobial pharmacist and two days a week, I would work as a teacher practitioner at a university. So that entire role was actually paid by the NHS Trust and the university pays the NHS Trust in order for me to be there two days a week. But the pay was exactly the same as any other specialist pharmacist that was out there. The pay at the time was £33,058 per annum. And I'm gonna break that down to how much money I received and took home with that NHS pay. Looking at £33,058, that would roughly be about £2,750 every month and that's before tax, so before your deductions. The first thing you'd have is pension contributions which work out to about 9.3%, that's £208. That's completely optional, you don't have to opt in for the NHS pensions but because the package that you receive with NHS pensions is so great, quite often a lot of staff would pay into the pension. You also need to consider two things when it comes to pay in the UK, and that's income tax as well as national insurance contributions, and you have to pay both of these. With regards to income tax, that will be £299. With regards to national insurance contributions, that will be £244. And then considering my student loan, those contributions will be £54 a month. So after all of that, the total take home pay comes out to just less than 2,000 pounds. So the exact amount is 1,948 pounds. So you can see that the large majority of your pay actually goes to national insurance, income tax, your student loans, as well as pension contributions. This was my pay when I started my role and that was 2019. In order to get an increment, so in order for your pay to increase, you need to work two years within that role. If you consider that as daily pay after tax, I was roughly getting 90 pounds a day. Now let's look at the pay for 2022 to 2023. If we look at the annual pay, the annual pay has increased since 2019. So the annual pay now for a band seven pharmacist, which will be a special this pharmacist is £41,659 annually. In terms of income tax contributions, this is £420 a month. In terms of national insurance contributions, this is £350 a month, and this has slightly increased now. In terms of the amount that would be going to your pensions, so your pension deductions, this will be £322. So again, that is still 9.3% of your salary, 
again a lot of staff would still pay into this because of the benefits of an NHS pension. So how much do you actually take home in 2022 to 2023? You take home £2,377. So you can see approximately a £400 a month increase since I worked my role three years prior to that. Again, you're still required to work for two years before you expect a pay increment. So let's consider that. Generally, people will have two years of experience before they will look at a specialist role. Sometimes it can be three years worth of experience. Do you think that this is a good pay? Do you think this is a good salary for specialist pharmacists in the UK? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. You also have to take into account the inflation rate in the UK. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did find it useful, like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.